Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. We all know that Linux is super popular in the server world, it runs all Android phones, it's basically the only choice in the Internet of Things department, and still on the desktop it barely scratched the surface of 1-2% to market share. And the Linux desktop has grown exponentially in terms of gaming performance, in terms of desktop environments, in terms of help, of user accessibility, it's just at a good point right now. So I think it's time we take a look at why the Linux desktop deserves to be more popular, but also why it isn't. Let's take a look right after this. This video is sponsored by Linode. Founded in 2003, Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider built on open source. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Multiple distros are available, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine, and of course Arch. The multiple server configurations make any app or service flexible and scalable to host a website, set up your own personal VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. Linode offers 24-7 support any day of the year by phone or support ticket, regardless of your plan size. The simple pricing with monthly caps ensures that there is no hidden fees and a generous monthly transfer is built in, which means there is no large bill surprises like you get from AWS or Azure. Sign up today at linode.com slash Linux experiments to get your $100 in Linux server credits. The link is in the description. Oh, and before I forget, in addition to having great written documentation, Linode also just started their own YouTube channel where you can check out video tutorials and guides, information on Linux cloud computing, and guest appearances from various experts. Check them out at youtube.com slash Linode. Okay, so Linux is super popular, right? It runs basically virtually all the servers in the world, it's on every single Android device, and on Internet of Things, it's just the default choice. There is just nothing else out there. Microsoft has their own Linux distro to run their Azure servers. Valve, one of the biggest gaming companies in the world, is actively working on making sure that Windows games can run on Linux. Microsoft is porting their software to Linux, Microsoft Teams. They are also porting Edge, and they have Skype. Like, this means, it has to mean, that the Linux desktop, the Linux system as a whole, is just one of the biggest out there. Because you can count Android as a Linux desktop just for a phone, right? Well, sure, Linux is the biggest OS out there in terms of shadowy presence. Like, sure, it runs on basically everything, but no one knows that Android uses the Linux kernel. No regular user knows about this. No one cares if your smart lock runs a Linux kernel. No one cares if the Google servers, the Microsoft servers, run using Linux. It's just no matter to most people, they don't care and they don't know. So most non-technical users don't even know that Linux exists. They don't even know that it does anything. And for the most non-technical users that do know about Linux, they mostly have a terrible image of it. They mostly think that it's still a command line based utility, that it has no graphical applications, that it's compatible with nothing, that it's gonna break your hardware, that it's for hackers, that it's for the dark web, that it's basically something that is just meant for geeks and nerds, and that has no place on their computer. So sure, Linux is reaching far and wide and is in the hands of many, many people. But these people absolutely don't know that Linux exists. It has an image problem. Now, it is undeniable that this image is definitely false. Linux has progressed leaps and bounds since the 2000s. The graphical user interfaces are now top notch. Basically, they exceed Windows or macOS in a lot of points these days. They have progressed and matured nicely. And Linux in general is a very powerful system because you have those graphical environments, but you also have the power of the command line, which Sure, it's scary for a lot of people, but it's still there underneath and gives you access to a lot of stuff that you couldn't do graphically on any other system. Now the problem here is twofold. No one knows that Linux has made that kind of progress. People that use Linux in the 2000s still see tutorials online written for Linux that only talk about the command line. It's all sudo this, apt install that, arch wiki this. There's no single tutorial that is explaining graphically how to do something even though you definitely can do those things graphically. Installing an application does not require you to use the command line, but people think it does because all you see online when people are talking about their systems is talking about the command line and not the graphical desktop environment. There's a very good explanation for this. Writing a tutorial for the command line makes sure that you can basically target every single distro in like two or three examples, whether writing for graphical user interfaces means that you have to install those, take screenshots of those, it's way more complicated. 
But still, for the general public, Linux is a command line using system. So all those graphical improvements that we have, they're just not visible to anyone. And the second problem is that we might have the graphical experience that users expect from a modern system on a desktop. The problem is we still lack a ton of other stuff to back that up. We still don't have an ecosystem. And I know I'm going on and on about the ecosystem, but you really think people want to have to take their phones, plug it in, sift through the folders in their phone, try to find the image and copy paste it on their desktop. No, they don't. They want syncing. They want syncing from their phone to their computer. They want to be able to copy files easily. They want to have wireless file transfer. And Linux out of the box doesn't support that on any desktop distro or at least most of them. We're still lacking this. And let's not get started on the installation part because you still need to download an ISO. Know what an ISO is to start. Then install that ISO on a USB disk. You have to know how to get into the BIOS or the UEFI to authorize booting from that USB key. You have to disable the secure boot. You have to understand what you're doing to your partitions, to your hard drives. No one knows how to do this. This is extremely scary. And that is a huge roadblock for people to change. Even if they get interested in Linux, in the Linux desktop, this is a big issue. We have awesome graphical environments, but we're still terrible at getting people to use them and know them. They don't know they exist and they don't know how to install it to try them out. It's still too complicated. Well, now the solution is to have more devices sold with Linux pre-installed, right? Because we have that. We have Dell, we have Lenovo selling Linux devices, devices pre-installed with Linux. Those two huge manufacturers are doing that. And we have Plenty of smaller ones like Tuxedo, like Slimbook, like Juno computers, like System76. We have plenty of those that are offering Linux pre-installed devices. And that's a good thing. Anyone can now just go out and buy a Linux machine, right? It's easy. But the only problem is that the general public, the public we need to reach if we want Linux to go past those 1% to 2% market share on the desktop, is never going to line up on Dell's website and buy the Linux version of the same laptop that is also offered with Windows just to save 30 bucks. It's not gonna work. If you display these machines side by side and you're not clear enough about which is running Linux and which is running Windows, people are gonna buy the Linux one because it's cheaper, but when they receive it, they won't know what they bought and they're gonna send it back to get a Windows machine. If they see the same machine side by side and the Linux difference is made clear, people are going to buy the Windows one because they don't know about Linux. They don't know what it is. They still have a terrible image of it and they're going to be scared and they're going to buy the Windows machine. And all those small retailers are doing an amazing job creating Linux powered devices. But that amazing job only works for people who already know about these manufacturers. When you go looking for a computer online, you don't end up on the Tuxedo website. You don't end up on the System76 website unless you're looking specifically for a machine pre installed with Linux, which is not what most people do. As long as these devices pre installed with Linux are not sold in retail stores, in brick and mortar stores, and people can get to try them, to see them, to see how it works, and the salespeople can counsel them and tell them, yeah, this is fine for what you want to do, then we are never going to pass that mark. It is just as simple as that. Okay, but once people see that Linux has choice, Linux has a wide breadth of desktop environments, of distributions, of software, they are going to want to try it, right? Because there's something for everybody. There is a graphical desktop environment for everyone. There is a note-taking app for everyone, a even a graphics image editing program for everyone. There's tons of choice and that's super important, right? People want that. People want to tailor their experience. That's also why they're fleeing the Macs or fleeing the Windows ecosystem, right? Well, yes and no. The problem is this choice is awesome and is a great argument for Linux, but it also scares people away. When you look online, trying to find your distribution, you cannot find help on what to pick. I even tried to make a guide about this, but it just doesn't work because there are too many choices for people. I think it's a good thing that we have that many choices. I think we just lack a tool that allows people to really understand what they should pick and which one they should go with. And the problem is we can't fix that unless we have some kind of branding initiative that regroups all distributions, all the Linux community behind a single initiative to try and push Linux in general, the Linux desktop, to the masses. But it's never gonna happen. 
Ubuntu, Manjaro, Arch, Endeavor OS, Elementor OS are never going to agree on a single avenue that lets people discover Linux, maybe have some kind of distro picker, which a few choices that the, the user fills in and then he tells him, you should probably try this one or this one. And that's it. People are never going to agree on that. They're all going to push their own agenda, their own distribution, and it's perfectly normal because most of these distributions are run as companies. And those companies want more users on their own distro. They don't want to work on something that lets people pick their distro. It's not what they want to work on, and that's normal. But as long as we don't have that, we're never going to be able to convince people to try out Linux because it's still too scary. <laughs> Look at our mascot, for God's sake. We still have that fat, cartoony penguin as the symbol for Linux. You try to put Tux anywhere in front of a user, he's gonna laugh you off the room. You have the sleek Apple logo, you have the sleek Windows logo, and you have the fat penguin in the middle. Sure, he's cute and he's historical, but it's not modern. It doesn't make you want to use Linux. It's, it's cartoony. It's something for nerds. We need a common branding and marketing initiative, and I know a lot of people despise marketing and communication. But you know what? Without marketing, you don't sell anything. So you need that. You need communication, you need marketing. And that's the main reason why I think the Linux desktop has continuously failed to pass the one or 2% bar in terms of market share. Okay, so to conclude, Linux is awesome. It is super powerful. It has made huge advances in terms of graphical ease of use, graphical compatibility, programs available. It's just, in my opinion, the best operating system there is out there. It's running on all servers. It's running most smartphones these days because Android has the majority share. It's just everywhere. But no one knows that Android runs Linux. No one cares that Linux is running all the servers in the world. And people are still scared of the choice of the command line, of the image that Linux has. We have no unified communications or marketing efforts. We have no unified community. We still have tutorials using the command line and we still have a fat cartoony penguin as our mascot. This is why the Linux desktop is not breaching the 1-2% to market share. Because we can't focus as a community on bringing it to the masses. We are just coasting on what we think is important for users without acknowledging at all that most users don't even know what an operating system is. And that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't hesitate to like if you did or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications to view more videos like this one. Don't hesitate to check my Patreon page or become a YouTube member to get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!